will worship God. And we say, yes, I will. I will worship you. I will give you my praise because you are worthy of the Father of God. You are so worthy of the God. Yes, Jesus, we worship you this morning. Come on, dear spirit, at this moment, just wherever you are at right now, it doesn't matter who is beside you, reminder, just remember who you are here for. Who brought you to this place? Who woke you up this morning? Who gave you the privilege of being here this morning? Many people all over the world, they don't have the privilege of coming to a place like this, of worshiping God freely. So why not praise Him? Why not worship Him? Why are we ashamed of showing God that we are here? That yes, I will, I will worship you, God. Because you are the one who brought me here. If it was up to me, I want to come. Like, you just, just think of that, just think of that. Like, what would I be doing right now if it wasn't for God? Where would I be if it wasn't for God? So give him your worship this morning. And this morning we are going to declare, I will worship you, God. I count on one thing, and that is the God who never fails me. Come on. I count on one thing. Say, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the way. God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high to the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy.
And I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stay one more time to say, and I choose to praise, and to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Say nothing, let nothing can come here and I say, and I choose to praise.
uh, professing their faith through the water baptism. Yes, thank you. So, we got baptized last week. I'm going to ask you to come up here so we can give you your I Decided t-shirt. So we got Jasmine, Orlando, Victor, and Melody. Go ahead and come on up. had a blessed week. We will be having a men's night out, bowling at AMF Bowl on 290 near Fairbanks, North Houston. It will be August 5th at 7 p.m. We hope to see you there. Prayer night visual will be at 8.30 p.m. July 30th at the church. Join us as we pray for your needs, the needs of others, and the church. It's a powerful time to fellowship and strengthen your faith. Greater things are ahead for Dayspring. Are you ready to help us make a great impact for God's kingdom? Attend our new building information on July 31st at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. Come and join the plans we have to purchase the new place God has for us. Learn how you can help and be a part of what we will be doing to get our own place. Child care will be provided. August 6, starting at 6 p.m., there will be a teens lock-in here at church, ending the following day at 10 a.m. The sign-up sheets are in the back table. Go crazy and enjoy a fun time and fellowship with your friends from Christ. Day Spring Worship will be part of a concert on August 1st. It is a worship night and new single release for recording artist Victory for the People. It will be at Montgomery United Methodist Church. Doors open at 7.45 p.m. Bring your friends and family to this blessed event as we praise and worship our Lord with other believers. Special shout out to a successful and memorable senior visit this past Saturday. God wants to show his love through us. If you would like to attend the next one, Contact Brother Steve or Sister Hilda for more information. Your tithes and offerings are at work here at Dayspring. Giving tithes is a commandment God's Word gives us to honor Him and help the church. Every dollar given matters and helps us to spread the gospel to the lost and help those in need. We thank you for your support and for partnering with us to spread the love of Jesus. Please make sure to write in the memo line if it is for the building fund or regular tithes and offerings. Thank you. 
Have a blessed week. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. All right, so welcome to our uh, first time visitors and welcome to Carla who is back over there. Look at her back over there. Woo, Carla. She looks like she's going to military duty with that mask there. All right, yeah. Praise God, praise God. And so we have new faces. So look to your neighbor and say, welcome to Day Spring. <laughs> we got some people that uh, this will be their last time. We're going to see them for a while. We've got Kier who's going off to the military in a few days. So praise God. All right. Noah and Bree, of course, they'll be leaving this week. They'll be going back to California to their military base. So we're going to miss you guys very, very much. But we'll be praying for you guys in just a little bit. I actually would hope that y'all come up for prayer, and I'd love to pray over you all a little bit later. So um, I'm going to ask the Lord to help me today with this message. So why don't you ask him to speak to your heart today? Uh, let me start off with prayer, and uh, let's get going to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, that you would be here with us today, and I thank you for your holy presence. Thank you, Lord, that you use me, move me out of the way, and speak through me today. I pray that everybody here would have their hearts and minds open to you and to the word that you have today. Thank you, Lord, that you would remove distractions, anything that the enemy may be throwing at us, Lord. I pray that truly today we can focus on worshiping you and you alone. Thank you for all of your blessings, Lord. I pray for your peace above all things in this place. Thank you for the love you give us each and every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Who's expecting something great today? Yeah. I don't know if I said this last week, but greatness is inside of you because the Holy Spirit's inside of you. If you're a believer, then the Holy Spirit is great. So greatness is just waiting to come out of you, right? Praise God, man. Nobody's ever told me that before. I hope if that's the first time you heard it, just know if you believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit's inside of you, then there is greatness inside waiting to come out. Amen? So... Um, for all of our family and friends that are watching online, thank you so much uh, for participating online. And for all of you guys here, again, I thank you all for worshiping us today. It's been an exciting day. There's been an energy all morning about, ha you know, what's happening with the baptisms happening at the end of service today. The baptisms started last week. This has been momentum that's been building and building actually for a while here, but for sure at VBS is when it started. You know, there's so much youth and so much passion for the Lord and what we do and the things that we do. And so... Sometimes it can get misplaced, what we worship. And today, that's what we're going to be talking about is worshiping. Before we do that, though, I definitely want to give you all, one of the announcements was a personal invitation. And I want to give you all a personal invitation for July the 30th at 6 p.m. We're going to be here, and we're going to be talking about, you're know, here at the church, and we're going to be meeting to hear about our new school and our new worship center. So if you're interested and you're excited about how, yeah, if you're interested and excited about how you can help and what we're going to do to get this, to get our own place, to make this vision a reality, then be here. These are exciting times. So this coming Saturday, July 30th at 6 p.m., we're going to be right here, and you get to hear the plans that we have for our new facility, for our new school, and what you can do to be a part of that. So there's my personal invitation for you. You might say, well, why do we need a worship center? Don't you own this place? The answer is no. I've had actually a couple people tell me this week, I thought this was Day Springs. I'm like, no, this isn't Day Springs. We just rent this place. But now it's time for us to get our own place. We shared the vision, right? A school, a community center, a worship center that's big enough for all of us. A place where events can happen. Weddings and quinceaneras and all these beautiful things that we do to celebrate life together. And that's what we're doing. And actually, I've actually seen some places come up that are just amazing. After we announce it, there's some places available. So if y'all want to be a part of that, please come and be a part of that with us. But the reason we need a worship center was because God created you to worship. I don't know if you knew this or not. And you know what the enemy will do? He will attack what you worship and how you worship. He will because he did to Jesus. We're going to go to our first scripture for today. It's in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. This was the second temptation that the enemy did on Jesus, and he attacked what Jesus worships. So it says then, so Jesus, after he had, was, was baptized, he goes to the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. It says, then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the enemy says, I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said. 
because they are mine to give to anyone I please. This is what the enemy tells Jesus. And Jesus says in verse 7, I'm sorry, then it continues on. He says, I will give it to all if you, and if you, excuse me, I will give it all to you if you will worship me. So this is what the enemy's telling you. Jesus, if you worship me, I'll give you everything. He took him up and he showed him all the kingdoms, all the riches and everything in the world at a moment of time like this. So he attacked what Jesus worships. And listen what Jesus said. Jesus replied, the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. That's it. The enemy no longer could fight against that because Jesus used the word of God. So if Jesus' worship, what he worships, was attacked, don't you think yours is going to be? Yes. Now, you might think, well, what do I worship? You know, we worship so many things in society today. We worship idols. American idols, right? There's even a show about it. We worship our possessions. You take care of it. You wash it. You work hard for it. You don't let anybody touch it or see it. Some of the other things that we worship, we worship our looks, right? Oh, man, I look good. I got to keep working at it to look like this. Newsflash, man, one day you won't look the way you look now. (laughs) Father time is is undefeated, so eventually you're not going to look that way. But sometimes we worship the things that we do, right? Sometimes we worship our education, our talents, the things that we've done. We worship those things. We worship our family above God. Now, see, you might say, well, how do I know what I'm worshiping? Whatever you spend most of your time thinking about, most of your money on, and most of your energy on, those are the things you worship. If you spend most of your time thinking about God, reading his word, praying, serving, giving, then that's what you're worshiping. If you're spending all of those things on whatever else, then that's what you worship. If somebody can't take your phone away from you without saying, hey, hey, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Hey, you got my phone? You got my phone? I'm just, if somebody's like, I'm just trying to look up something on Amazon. Yeah, give me my phone. Give me my phone. Well, guess what you are worshiping? That phone. So many people are walking around today like just like this, man. They're looking like this. They're looking like this and everything. They're missing life that's going on. They're missing their kids crawling for the first time. They're missing this happening over here. They're missing all the beautiful things because they're just on their phone scrolling to see what other people are doing. You are worshiping that phone. Are you worshiping your phone? Are you worshiping your devices? Are you worshiping your jobs? And, man, I got to take care of it. I got to do everything I can, man. I'm going to give it. I'm I'm not going to serve. I'm not going to do this. I mean, what are you worshiping? You know what you're worshiping. What you spend your time on, what you spend your money on, and what you spend your energy on, that's what you worship. See, so when when I say that God created us to worship, he did, but not to worship those things. He created us to worship him. The word of God says he is a jealous God. And I said, well, that doesn't sound good. Jealousy's not good. He's jealous for you. He wants your affection. He wants your attention. He wants your love. What do you give your affection, your attention, and your love to? Whatever that is, that's what you're worshiping. And this is the second thing we're talking about in this church series is worship because true worship makes the church grow up spiritually. Everybody that's in here, you're not in the children's class, just about. I mean, there's a few little ones in here, and I get it. But you're growing up. From the moment you are born, you're growing up physically, mentally, probably emotionally. But not everybody grows up spiritually. Worshiping God the right way The complete way with your life will help you to grow up spiritually. Are you all ready to find out how that is? You ready to know how to worship God the right way? Are you ready? Can I get an amen if y'all are ready? Can you look to your neighbor and say, I'm ready to find out how to worship God? Was that too long of a sentence? Maybe it was. (laughs) All right. It's brunch time, guys. Come on now. You got to wake up now. Let's go. Let's go. To worship means this, to honor God with extravagant love and extreme submission. It means to honor him with love and submission. Do you do that? Psalm 95, 6, I love it. It's very short, but this is a real good picture of it. We're going to give a great picture in just a little bit. But Psalm 95, 6 says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Worship him. Kneel down. Right? It's more than just, see, Christian worship involves what we just did, singing and dancing. That's what we think of most of the time when we say I'm going to worship the Lord is just putting on some music and I'm singing the lyrics and I'm dancing. But there is so much more to worshiping. 
everything that we do on Sundays is an act of worship. Teaching is an act of worship. You know that we have classes before service starts around 930? Prayer classes on how to pray? That's an act of worship. Sometimes I'll get up here and I'll do a teaching as opposed to a preaching or a combination. That's an act of worship. Of course, praying, when you come up to receive prayer and you pray for someone else, that is also an act of worship. What? are you thinking, I didn't know that. It is. Tithing is an act of worship because you're giving, right, what God's word is commanding us to give, and you're helping the church to function. That's an act of worship. Serving. Our volunteers, when they're served, they are worshiping God. That's a lot, right? Preaching, what I'm doing, is an act of worship. And then different rituals that we do, like communion and what we're going to do later, baptism, those are acts of worship. Now, I don't know if you knew that or not. You might have thought, me, man, worshiping is just lifting my voice and lifting my hands. Yes, that's a part of it, but that's not all of it. It's not even all of it in your life. You see, we can do that on Sunday mornings, but if you worship God, truly worship him, you're worshiping him in other areas of your life because you worship at home, at work, on the road, on the streets, it's how you behave. It's what you give your time, your talents, your treasures to, right? What you invest in, that's what you worship. So if you're here at 11 a.m. serving and you're praising God and you're singing and that's great, man. You're worshiping God. You're doing all these things. You're giving. You're worshiping God. But if you go out of here and you forget God or you put him on the shelf, then you are not living a life of worship. It's not going to get you through. It's a small taste of what worship is if you're only doing it on Sunday mornings. Worship is described, the word of God describes it as a way of life. The Apostle Paul is a perfect example of that. And see, and we worship God because he's God, not because he gives us blessings. And so you might say, well, how do I worship God? Simply start by this, thank him. Just start thanking him. You start talking to him. See, because if you're thankful that God healed you from that disease, if you're thankful that God accepted you, if you're thankful that God di that died on the cross for you, then you're going to want to show that love and that gratitude to other people. You're going to say, you know what, what can I do to show the love of God that he showed me? Or what can I do to, to sing, man? You know, I don't care if I sound bad. I don't care if I'm off key. I want the Lord to hear me sing to him. If I want to dance, then I'm going to dance, man. If I come up to pray, I, I don't care. You start worshiping because you don't care what other people think. You're more concerned about God. It's a way of life. So you start thanking him. You start thanking him with your words. You start thanking him with the things that you do. You start thanking him with your treasures. That's the things that you value. You start thanking him with your heart. And yes, you start thanking him with your bodies. How do I do that? You might say, well, how do I do that? Or why should I do that? It's sad, but I'm going to tell you that many believers don't worship God the way that I've talked about today. But we should. And here's the reason that we should. Some of you, I don't know if y'all like, you know, the good stuff or the bad stuff, you know, the hard things or the easy things, but the Word of God is full of both. It's full of very direct things that we get blessed if we do, and then we don't get blessed if we don't do them. But listen to this in John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. This is the reason that we should begin to worship. If you've not been worshiping up to today, up to this minute, start doing it now. It says here, because the hour is coming and is here now. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The time is coming. What that means is the Lord is coming back. He is. And the truth is he's coming back to judge. He's going to be judged Jesus when he comes back. And when he comes back, it could be in five seconds. Could be in 500 years, but it could be before I finish this sermon today. Will he find you worshiping? Will he find you worshiping him? Or will he find you worshiping your phone, your job, your school, your talents, your health? Your, what is he going to find you worshiping? Because he's coming back, and he knows. The Lord looks at the heart, so you can't fool him. You can say with your mouth what you're worshiping, but he knows. He looks right here. What's going to be your verdict Guilty or innocent? Are you worshiping him? Because true worship, it, it takes place on the inside. This is where it starts. It starts in your heart. And then it flows out of your spirit and into your life. 
it starts showing to the people around you. We were at this uh, pastor's conference just yesterday, man, and, you know, you hear wonderful things um, going on when you're around so many other believers and ministers and leaders. And one of the things that came up was your first ministry is at home, no matter what. If the home is not right, it's not going to be right if you're trying to do ministry or serving and doing things outside. So start in your home. Would your people at home say that you worship God? Not just by singing and playing music all day long. Yes, you can do that. But how you talk, how you behave, what you give your energy to. Do you have restless nights sleeping because you're so stressed out you can't sleep at night? Are you serving here? Are you doing, I mean, what would they say? You know, you're, don't be so concerned about what other people that you don't know say, but look at the people that are closest to you because they'll be honest with you. If you have little kids, ask them. They'll be very honest with you. No, Daddy, Mommy, you're great at church, but you're so mean when we get in the parking lot. They'll tell you, <laughs> especially if they're not a teenager afraid that you'll take away their phone or the car, right? If they're little, they got no, nothing to lose, they'll be completely honest. You're so nice around everybody else, but mean to me, Daddy. <laughs> that hurts, by the way, that one. The reason we worship, man, is because, listen, when you truly come to God to worship, you change. He changes you. There's no way around it. You can pretend, and we can fake people out. We can look good for an hour. It's easy. If you go home exhausted, maybe you were pretending. But the Lord knows, right? But it's a difference. There is a transformation. If you want a different life, if you want to be forgiven for your past, if you want the great future that God has for you, start worshiping him now. Right now. It doesn't take much. He wants you. He already has his arms wide open for you. He's just telling you, come to me. Celebrate what I've done in your life. Celebrate me. Thank me. Start worshiping God today. And you know, God, he responds to our worship. It pleases him. The word of God tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul is telling us this. The apostle Paul shows us how to worship. If you're not sure, man, start reading the letters from Paul. It's after the book of Acts, pretty much all the way to Revelations, really to 1 Peter, is almost all the apostle Paul. He says, I appeal to you, meaning I beg you. He says, I beg you, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. How do I sacrifice my body? Do you have to die for him? Maybe. He died for you. But the great thing is he's not asking just about everybody to die for him. Right? He's not. But he's asking you to deny your flesh. If there's something that you feel addicted to, something that takes you away from him, maybe it's ruining your marriage or your relationship with your kids, be a living sacrifice. Sacrifice that stuff at my altar right here, and come live for me. That's holy and acceptable. You do it for me, not me, but God is what he's saying. It's spiritual worship. So before you give yourself to things, to people, to stuff, give yourself a way to worship God. We give away our things to relationships, to our jobs, to schools, to hobbies. Why? I'm not, God's not telling you not to enjoy life. He's not saying don't have relationships or don't have fun playing golf or swimming or whatever you do for a hobby. He's not saying don't go to school. He's not saying that. What he's telling you is there's a place for it. First comes him. God is first. Worship me first. You think you don't have enough time in the day? Start worshiping me and you'll see how much more time I'll give you. It's amazing, by the way. When you put God first, you read your word and you pray for him at the beginning, it just seems like you have so much time to do everything else. But when you forget, all of a sudden you're thinking, man, it's 12 o'clock, maybe I'll pray for him. No, I'll just pray to God tonight. Then your day goes like this, and you look back and say, man, what did I do today? I did so many busy things, but I just, I don't know what I did. Was that, did I do anything productive? 
But when you start by worshiping God, praying, reading the word, and throughout the day you're talking to him and you're sharing with other people, this is what Jesus has done in my life, and you're serving other people, and you're giving not just your monies, but your time and your advice, and you're giving your love, then you start seeing God, he will make your days longer, more productive. See, the greatness that's in you starts coming out when you worship God. Jesus, he died for us. That right there is reason enough alone for us to worship him. He died for you on that cross. And I know sometimes that's hard for people to believe. Is Jesus really the way? Yes, he's the way. I wouldn't be standing here in front of you if he wasn't the way. Carla wouldn't be back over there if Jesus wasn't the way. You wouldn't be where you are if Jesus wasn't the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, he is the way. Yes, give a hand clap to the Lord. Everything good that has happened in your life that you can't explain is from God. And everything good that has happened in your life that you can't explain is also from God. Are you going to acknowledge that? You see, you worship him by saying, thank you, Lord. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Thank you, God. That's an act of worship. And then you pray to him and you're talking to him about it. Jesus died for you to worship him and to worship him in the good times and in the bad. See, that's not so easy, is it? Just ask yourself this question right now. As I'm going to ask you this, but think about this. If you never received one more blessing or if you never saw one more miracle for God for the rest of your life and you lived another 50 years, but you never saw anything good, would you still worship him? And if the answer is no, then you're not worshiping God for being God. You're worshiping him for what he gives you. But if the answer is yes, and look, it can be a hard yes. You might say, man, I'm struggling with this one. I don't know. I want your blessings, Lord. I want your favor. I want, I don't know. But once you say yes, man, the doors of heaven and blessings will overflow on you. He knows when you're genuine, when you say with your heart, yes, I will worship you in the good and in the bad. Jesus worshiped in the good and the bad, didn't he? I can't imagine being nailed to the cross Stripped naked and being laughed at by people while they gamble for my clothes was something good that anybody here would want to do. And as Jesus was there, he prays and said, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Still, he's worshiping by praying. He's worshiping by continuing to do what he came down here to do. Nobody here is dying an excruciating death, being having nails driven through your nerves in your body and your hands and being whipped and stripped and bleeding to death. Nobody in here is like that right now. So if nobody's in here like that, and I know you got bad things in your life, you got stuff that's happened with your family, with your friends, maybe your school, your finances, relationships, I get all of that stuff. But Jesus died on the cross so that you don't have to live with that forever. You'll have to live with those pains and those scars while you're here on this earth, yes. But even while he's here, he says, I'm the God of all comfort. I am the God of strength. I will give you what you need to get through it. And then he says, and once you're with me in heaven, there is no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, that everything will be made new. Is that reason enough to worship our God? That's reason enough for me to worship the Lord. Yes, praise God. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord. Worship him in good times and bad, and when you do, you will grow up spiritually. I know it's hard. I know. Everybody in this room right now has traumatic experience in their life, and some of you have had a hundred of them, where other people wouldn't have lasted, but you're still alive. God doesn't choose, right, the people that are winners. He chooses the ones who are overcomers. Are you an overcomer? You're sitting here today. You're an overcomer. That's reason enough to worship God. I think I've given you about 10 reasons today to worship God. And it's more than just singing. But, yeah, we express it when we sing. I don't, guys, I have a horrible singing voice. I do. It's bad. Y'all know Mike Cortez. He would not let me sing to the inmates when I used to be in the prison ministry. He's like, don't do it. Move your mouth. It's bad. I'm singing over here next to Michelle, you know. I'm singing. It doesn't matter, right? Fernanda's voice and Karen's voice doing a fantastic job, both of them, man, they overpower me anyway. When I get too loud, Jose's over here, he just starts playing the bass a little bit harder, man, you know, right? (laughs) 
<laughs> he just drowned me out, right? So it doesn't matter. When we get up here and sing and we worship God, man, sing. Let the angels hear you. Let the Lord hear him and say, yeah, that's my son and my daughter. Now they're worshiping me for who I am. Now let him say that. He's our father in heaven. He wants to hear that raspy voice. He wants to hear that, that voice that has off key. He wants to hear it, man, so give it to him. And then you lift your hands. You know why people lift hands in, in Christian churches? It's a form of surrender, right? It's also a way that Christians would show. This was a way of showing, hey, our Lord, he, he had the nails pierced through his hands. So it was like, hey, you know, it was like this. It was their secretive thing when they were going around being persecuted. They would show, right? This is the nails and hands. So you're surrendering, Lord. If somebody comes up to you with a gun, what do you do? Oh, I give up. Surrender. So I give up my way of life. I give up what I'm worshiping, Lord. I'm going to surrender to you, and I'm going to worship you. So you're up here, and you're worshiping. Guys, lift your hands. There's nothing wrong with it. Nobody's going to laugh at you and say, aha, that's the first time you lift your hands, isn't it? Nobody's going to do that here. Nobody's going to do that. I say, hey, man, I don't know if I used deodorant this morning. So what, man? Nobody cares. There's plenty of air flowing in here. See, worship is fun. All right, I'm making jokes, right? I'm glad y'all are laughing. There's at least one or two <laughs> I usually have very corny jokes and people are laughing today. But it's okay, man. When we worship, it's living a life. It's a lifestyle. It's going to look goofy on some and some it's not. It's okay. The Lord loves it all. You are precious in his sight. If you can't dance, he knows you can't dance. Dance anyway. Right? If you can't say words right, he knows you stutter. Stutter anyway. Just worship God. He made you. He loves you. It's time to worship God. See, because when we worship God, man, he changes everything in our life. Do you need a change in your life? Do you want to be changed? Do you want the, the stuff that you've gone through, man, to stop bothering you and keeping you up at night? Do you want the things that you're doing now to stop affecting everybody around you? Start worshiping God. I love this psalm right here. I'm going to read Psalm 96, 1 through 10. I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. And I want you to think about this. Just close your eyes. And this is worshiping God. Listen to this. Psalm 96, 1, it says, sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Tell his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Now look back up here. This is somebody who's singing to God. This is somebody who sees, man, that God has done some great things. This is somebody who is in pain and torture and torment. If you don't know what to read, read the book of Psalms if you have a hard time in life right now. If you're depressed or you have anxiety attacks at night, start reading Psalms because you'll see somebody who's going through some horrible things. Most of them are from King David. His own son was trying to kill him, and he's pouring his heart out to God, and still he would praise God. You see, he's worshiping God in the good and the bad. So the word of God shows you right here how to do that. And here's why we worship him this way. Verse 5, it says, the gods of other nations are more, mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Wow. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. This is his sanctuary, brothers and sisters. He says, O oh, nations, you can look at that and say, O oh, people of the world of different cultures, of different backgrounds. He says, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come to his courts. Worship the Lord with all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. And then lastly, tell all the nations, the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all people fairly. Praise and worship, you can come up. So listen to this. The Lord wants us to worship him. He wants us to sing. He wants us to dance. Here, this psalm, Psalm 96, tells us to come up, kneel before him, bow down before him, Give yourself, give an offering, he says, and come up to your courts. Well, what am I offering? Offer your life to God. Offer your time to God. Your life and your time are worth much more than money, worth much more than talents, worth much more than your smarts and your abilities. But your life, 
If you say, Lord, I'm available to you. I'm going to give you my time. Man, that's what he wants. So what, what do I offer? Offer that. And this next song here, we're going to invite everybody to come up to the altar to pray. And there's a couple of you guys who are leaving. I want to pray for you, me and Michelle over here specifically. I'm going to call the prayer partners to come up with us right now. If you've never given your life to the Lord, and today you want to give your life to the Lord, if you want to say, man, I want this new change, this new life, then now's the time to come up. And one of the prayer partners can pray with you. If you've never said the sinner's prayer, they can pray with you as well. But for those few that I've asked for, I'd like to come and pray with them over here in the corner. For everybody else, the altar's always open. We'll turn the lights down here for everybody. And this will give you just an intimate time between you and the Lord. The sanctuary lights will be turned down. And don't worry about anybody next to you, on the side of you, in front of you, behind you. Everybody in here has come up to the altar at some point in their life. Nobody's going to say anything because they're dealing with themselves right now between them and God. You may be saying, well, can the Lord forgive me for the abortions that I went through or that I did, for the, the talking about people, or the stealing or the lying or the cheating or whatever. Yes. Yes. 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross for all sin, all sin everywhere that everyone has done. And so if you want to get right with God, offer yourself to him right now in worship. Prayer partners are here to come and pray with you, so pray with them. And then after this, we're going to go on and continue with the rest of our service. Right now is the time. Savior, oh, 
And bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. We sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? We sing hallelujah. Christ is risen, bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. We sing hallelujah, Christ is risen, oh what a Savior, and oh what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? We sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. We bow down before him, for he is Lord. about baptism you're not sure if you should get baptized in water I'm going to tell you we have gowns baptismal gowns in the restrooms and plenty of towels you're welcome to it's like the eunuch said last time he said there's water right here what stops me from being baptized and Philip said if you believe with all your heart you may so nothing is stopping you except you if you're not sure and you want to get baptized next week we're doing more next week so that'll be great too but going back to what I was saying today about worship, when the judge comes back, what's going to be the verdict? Is he going to say, you're worshiping me? You are a true worshiper. I hope so. I hope you start worshiping him in the good times and the bad. I know this, when you take your first step towards God, he takes the next steps towards you. So make that first step. 
We've got some of the young folks that are getting baptized today. I'm so excited about it. Some have recommitted their lives and are getting baptized again. Some are going to be for the first time. Everybody's nervous, but are excited nervous. So as a group of believers, what we're going to do after this next song, we're going to sing this one song together, Reckless Love, while they're getting ready. And as soon as we're done there, then I want you all to join me outside up in the front. We're going to baptize um, all of these young ones. And please, man, when, we, when they come out, man, start cheering. Because the word of God says that the heavens they rejoice when one sinner repents. And that's what they're doing. So there's a party going on in heaven. There might as well be a party going on at day spring. Amen. So we're going to finish up with that. Don't forget about our meeting next Saturday night. We want to have you guys here. And our new members class also will be next Sunday immediately after church. But right now, Fernando's going to go ahead and take, a, uh, take us to finish up, up worshiping today. So worship the Lord the way he deserves. And I'll see you outside in just a few minutes.